Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the next video of this entire series of Exchange Server 2019. In the last video, we talked about IMAP and POP protocols and we configured IMAP and POP services in on-premise Exchange Server. In this particular video, we will be talking about cutover migration. We will understand what is cutover migration, what is the process of cutover migration, we will talk about the prerequisites. Those are required to be met before we perform cutover migration. And then we will migrate on-premise mailboxes to Office 365 using cutover migration. Cutover migration is the simplest migration type to implement. Using cutover migration, you can migrate all your mailboxes, groups, contacts, and calendars to Office 365 in one go. You can perform cutover migration if your on-premise exchange server version is 2003 or later, and you have less than 2000 mailboxes. You can perform cutover migration when you are planning to move completely to Office 365. You want to move all your on-premise recipients to Office 365, and you want to decommission your on-premise exchange server. In cutover migration, the contents from on-premise exchange server are copied to Office 365. Cutover migration is not a cut and paste process. When you start cutover migration, it first provisions the on-premise accounts in Office 365, and then it copies the contents of these accounts to Office 365. So during the process of cutover migration, there will be two mailboxes for one user at the same time. The original exchange mailbox that is stored in on-premise exchange and the copy of the user mailbox that is being migrated to exchange online. Let's take a look at cutover migration process. First, we need to meet all the prerequisites for cutover migration. Once we have met all the prerequisites, we need to create an Office 365 tenant and we need to verify the on-premise domain in Office 365. Then we will create a migration endpoint to connect Office 365 to our on-premise exchange server. Once migration endpoint is created, we will create a migration batch and we will start the migration. And once migration is completed, we will create MX record in public DNS and we will route all the emails directly to Office 365. Then we will delete the migration batch. We will assign license to the users. We will create other DNS records in Office 365 like CNAME record so that users can connect to their mailboxes using Outlook client. And finally, we can go ahead and decommission on-premise exchange. So this is the process of cut over migration. Now let's talk about the prerequisites. Those are required to be met for cutover migration. Cutover migration use Outlook Anywhere to connect to your on-premise exchange server. So you need to make sure that Outlook Anywhere is enabled and configured in your on-premise exchange server. In Exchange 2013, 2016, and 2019, Outlook Anywhere is enabled by default. But if you are using Exchange 2003, 2007, and 2010, you need to enable Outlook Anywhere manually. You would require an SSL certificate from a third party certification authority. And mail.domain.com and autodiscover.domain.com has to be added under subject alternative name of that certificate. When we create migration endpoint in Office 365, we specify on premise exchange administrator credentials. This admin account should have full access permission or receive as permission on the on-premise mailboxes that we are going to migrate to Office 365. You need to make sure the mailboxes that you want to migrate to Office 365, they should not be hidden from address list. If any mailbox is hidden from address list, cutover migration will skip that mailbox. If you have Azure AD Connect deployed in on-premise, you need to disable it before you start cutover migration. Now, if you already have synchronized on-premise identities to Office 365 using Azure AD Connect, you need to purge them. Because during cutover migration, these identities will be provisioned automatically in Office 365. 
So if you already have users synchronized to Office 365, Cutover migration will either provision duplicate accounts in Office 365 or migration process will fail. So that is the reason you need to disable Azure AD Connect before you initiate cutover migration. If unified messaging is enabled in on-premise, you need to disable it. And if you are planning to migrate on-premise security groups, you need to create mail-enabled security groups in Office 365. These groups will be empty mail-enabled groups. And once migration is done, the membership of the on-premise groups will be updated in Office 365 security groups automatically. We need to create empty security groups in Office 365 because cutover migration cannot provision security groups in Office 365. So we need to create these groups manually and the membership of these groups will be updated automatically during the migration process. So let's move towards our lab and let's do cutover migration. I assume you already have one Office 365 tenant, so I will not be able to show you how to create Office 365 tenant. So let's go ahead and let's add on-premise domain in Office 365. I own a domain that I'm currently using in on-premise and that domain is office365concepts.com. I have purchased this domain from GoDaddy, so I will have to manage all the DNS records in GoDaddy. As of now, we are going to add only the TXT record because we need to publish only this record in Office 365. So let me create a new record and TXT at paste the value and click add record. So this DNS record is not created. Let me save it again. Okay, now it is created. So now we have verified the domain in Office 365 tenant. As of now, the CNAME record and MX record, these two records are pointing to my on-premise exchange server. Here you can see mail.office365concepts.com and same for MX record, mail.office365concepts.com. So we have only verified this domain in Office 365. Let's click verify. So the verification is done. Now Office 365 will ask you to verify other records as well, like MX, SPF, and CNAME record. You do not have to verify these records as of now. So you can simply close the process and the domain is verified. Next, we will check if our on-premise exchange server is reachable from internet through Outlook Anywhere. I'm using Exchange 2019, so Outlook Anywhere is enabled already. And in one of the previous videos, we have configured Outlook Anywhere for our exchange server. Now, if you want to test Outlook Anywhere, you need to go to PowerShell. And first, you need to connect with Exchange Online module. And once you are connected, I'm already connected here. If I run get iPhone mailbox, I should see the result. And I am connected. So to test Outlook Anywhere from Exchange Online, we need to run dollar credentials equal get iPhone credential. And here we will type the email address and password of our on-premise administrator. And next we will run test hyphen migration server availability. First, we will use Exchange Outlook Anywhere because first we have to, we are going to perform cutover migration. So cutover migration use Exchange Outlook Anywhere. So that is the reason we are going to test Outlook Anywhere. Plus you need to test auto discover service as well. After that, we will use email address. Email address will be the email address of the administrator account that we just used and credentials. And here we will use the variable that we just defined credentials. 
So by running this command, you can verify if Exchange Online can connect to your on-premise Exchange server using Outlook Anywhere and Auto Discover. So the result says success, and it has tested the endpoint that is my on-premise Exchange server mail.office365concepts.com, and it says valid true. So that means my on-premise Exchange server is accessible from Exchange Online over Outlook Anywhere and auto discover. Now the next prerequisite for cutover migration is SSL certificate. We already have one SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt. If you want to verify the certificate from Exchange Admin Center, you can go to servers and then click certificates. And here we can see the SSL certificate that we have got from Let's Encrypt and domain.com mail.office365concepts.com and autodiscover.office365concepts.com are added under subject alternative names of this certificate. If you want to verify the exchange certificates from Exchange Management Shell, you can run get hyphen exchange certificate, press enter, and this will list all the certificates. If you want to check more details, you can copy the thumbprint and you can Type the same command, get hyphen exchange certificate hyphen thumbprint, paste the value, and then do pipe FL. It will give you all the details, all the attributes of the certificate. You can check from whom you have got this certificate, validation date, and you can check the services, those are binded, and you can check the domains as well. Now, the next prerequisite for cutover migration is we will assign full access permission on on-premise mailboxes for admin account that we are going to use in migration endpoint for migration purpose. So in my on-premise exchange server, I have few mailboxes. And I have these mailboxes, two, three, four, five. I have five mailboxes. So I will have to assign full access permission on these four mailboxes. So I will be running add hyphen mailbox permission hyphen identity. Identity will be the user. First, I'm going to assign permission on user two. Then we will use hyphen user. Hyphen user will be the administrator account who needs permission on this mailbox. Access rights. Access hyphen inheritance type all press enter. So this permission is assigned. Same way we will assign permission on user one. For John Smith as well, I believe I have permission on John Smith and Bob Ross. Okay, it is John Smith. Okay, and then we have Bob Ross. So that's done. So we have assigned full access permission on the mailboxes as well. Next, we need to make sure that the on-premise mailboxes or the on-premise recipients are not hidden from address list. If you want to verify this attribute for mailboxes, you can run get hyphen mailbox pipe FL. Then we will look for display name and hidden from address list. Press enter. So here we can see all the mailboxes are not hidden. It says hidden from address list enabled false. That means these mailboxes or the recipients are not hidden from address list. So this attribute is set to false for everyone. This is set for discovery search mailbox. We do not need this. We do not want to migrate this mailbox. For rest of the mailboxes, this is set to false. Next prerequisite says you need to disable Azure AD Connect if it is enabled in your on-premise. As of now, I do not have Azure AD Connect deployed, so we will skip this step. And unified messaging is also not available in Exchange 2019, so we will skip this step as well. Now let's go to Office 365. 
and let's go to exchange admin center go to recipients and let's create migration endpoint go to recipients click on migration click on these three dots click on migration endpoints click on plus now here you need to select outlook anywhere because cut over migration use outlook anywhere to connect from exchange online to your on-premise so select outlook anywhere if you are doing cut over migration and then click next under email address you will type one of the on-premise mailboxes email address so here i will use bob ross at office 365 concepts.com account with privileges will be admin account of your on-premise exchange server so here the format will be office 365 concepts.com and then username and here we will type the password of this admin account so once you are done click next now if this exchange online tenant can connect to my on-premise exchange server on the next screen i should see my exchange server properties like the url that is mail.office365concepts.com so here we can see this migration endpoint wizard has automatically detected my exchange server url that is mail.office365concepts.com and the authentication is ntlm and mailbox permission is domain admin this is assigned to my administrator account now let's go next here we will type the endpoint name for this migration endpoint for example test cut over migration we can leave these values as it is and click new so the migration endpoint is created click close and if i go to active users so in active users in office 365 i do not see my on-premise users as of now in on-premise i have these many users admin bob ross john smith user one and user two but in office 365 i do not have any one of these accounts so let's create migration batch now go to recipients migration click on this drop down now here we will select migrate to exchange online because we are going to migrate the mailboxes from on-premise to exchange online you select migrate from exchange online when you do offboarding in case of exchange hybrid so select migrate to exchange online here we will select cut over migration go next we can see all the details here already go next and this is the migration batch batch one click next no changes are required here we will select automatically start the batch click new and this will start the migration batch click ok on the right here you can see the type of the migration that you are performing we are doing exchange outlook anywhere that is for cut over and staged migration as well direction is onboarding we are migrating from on-premise to office 365 status is syncing here we can see status as well mailbox status synced mailboxes zero out of five finalized zero out of five and as of now there is no failed mailbox if we click on view details we can see the status is validating as of now this batch migration batch is validating the on-premise users once it will change to provision after that you should be able to see on-premise users here under active users so let's wait for some time now let's go to view details again and now we can see the status is changed to provisioning so let's close this and let me refresh the page so now here we can see the administrator account bob ross john smith test user one test user one is my in cloud user user two and we are left with user one so let me refresh it again and here we can see user one and user two 
Bob Ross, John Smith, and administrator. So these accounts are provisioned in Office 365. Let's go back to migration batch. View details. Status is still provisioning. No items are skipped so far. More details as of not is showing anything. So let's wait for a few minutes and after that we will check the status again. Now, if you want to check the status of migration or migration batch from PowerShell, make sure you are connected to Exchange Online module first, and you can verify the batch by running get hyphen migration batch, press enter, and this will give you the details of uh, batch name, status of the batch, type of the migration that you are running, and how many mailboxes are within that batch. If you want to check more attributes, you can add pipe FL, press enter, and this will give you more details like the name of the batch, status, syncing, state is waiting for the next process. And you can see number of mailboxes within the batch, date and time when this batch was created, who created it. This is the admin account of my Office 365 tenant. And here you can see the type of the migration that we are performing, Outlook Anywhere. Batch direction is onboarding. We are migrating users from on-prem to cloud. And like this, you can check all these details. Now, if you want to check the migration statistics, though it will not give you much details, but still you can check. So here it will show you the your default domain of your Office 365 tenant, total count, active count. Active count is how many mailboxes are still active within the batch. If any mailbox is failed, it will not show you the exact number, I mean the same value as total count. Again, it will show you the type of the migration that you're performing. Now, next you can check the users or the mailboxes who are within the migration batch. And for that, you can run get hyphen migration user, press enter. And this will list all the users or the accounts. Those are within the batch. So I have five accounts and we can see five accounts here. Now, if I want to check the properties or uh, the values for a particular user within the batch, you can copy the email address, run get hyphen migration user paste the email address and pipe FL. So like this, you can check the, this is the email address, batch name, and recipient type says mailbox. Status is provision updating. This is still showing syncing. So here we can see the status provision updating. Next, status summary says active. Migration type is Exchange Outlook Anywhere. State is waiting for the next process. And so like this, you can check the properties. If you want to check properties for this account, same way you can run the same command. And here, type the email address, pipe FL. So you can check properties for this particular user as well. So like this, you can verify the migration from PowerShell also. So now the migration status is syncing. Earlier, this was showing provision updating. So this is changed to syncing for all five mailboxes. Cutover migration is a slow migration process. Though you can migrate 2000 mailboxes in one go to Office 365, but this is recommended to add 100 mailboxes or 150 mailboxes in one batch. Because cutover migration will take time if you're going to migrate 2000 mailboxes in one go. And if migration is going to take time, there will be delay or there will be downtime for the on premise mailboxes. So once the migration batch is completed, you can assign license for these users. And click save. Like this, you can assign license to all the users. And after that, you can go to public DNS and you can modify 
the MX bracket. As of now, MX bracket is pointing to on premise. So we can modify this to Office 365. For my domain, MX bracket will be this one Office 365 concepts siphon com dot mail dot protection dot outlook dot com and click save. This is not saved properly. So this is Office 365 concepts siphon com dot mail dot protection dot outlook dot com. Click save. And same way you can add CNM record as well for auto discover. For Office 365, it will be auto discover dot outlook dot com. Click save. So the DNS records are updated. Moreover, you can add the SPF record as well. And once this is done, you can go ahead and you can decommission your on-premise exchange server. So this is how you perform cutover migration from on-premise to Office 365. In the next video, we will be talking about Exchange Hybrid Deployment. We will understand what is Exchange Hybrid Deployment, what are the components of Exchange Hybrid Deployment. We will talk about the different types of Exchange Hybrid Deployment types and what benefits are provided by each deployment type of Exchange Hybrid. So that is all for now. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.